everyone welcome to my channel so today i am very excited to share with you the first ever ipsy glam bag x and for those of you who aren't familiar with ipsy it's a beauty subscription service that provides skincare makeup and related products on a monthly basis they recently just released this new product the glam bag x and this is on a quarterly basis where if you have a glam bag plus subscription already you can upgrade to glam bag x and so for 55 dollars you get this whole box over here which has up to 350 dollars worth of product within it and my particular box this month has 255 dollars and the point of glam bag x is that it's supposed to have some more high-end and luxurious products compared to your typical ipsy bag which tends to focus more on indie beauty products and I'm super excited to check this out because for a while now, since my makeup collection keeps growing, I've been debating whether to continue my Ipsy subscription because I find increasingly whenever I get beauty products from Ipsy, they tend to just kind of fall to the wayside because I'm already collecting so much makeup that, you know, there's only so much makeup I can put on my face. That said, I am really excited about this box because it has two brands that I haven't tried before, but I have been super interested in trying which are Patrick Ta and Huda Beauty and in general the branding for this first ever Glam Bag X is really based around this collaboration with Patrick Ta and so that was part of what interested me in this because I haven't tried his products before but I'm super curious now to try it out as part of this box so without further ado let me open this up and show you guys what I got so first off this is what the inside of the box looks like so they provide this little pamphlet over here that talks about the Glam Bag X. And as I mentioned, it's sort of a collab with Patrick Ta for this one. And so it has a lot of information about his makeup artistry. So I think this is a pretty interesting concept because when I first saw that it was a collab, I kind of assumed this would be kind of a box just full of Patrick Ta goodies and, you know, kind of a way to explore and discover the brand. But it is a box with one Patrick Ta product and the rest are other brands. But but it seems like he's helped curate them and provided tips for how you can use them. So in the bag itself, you get eight products and four of them are products that are pre-selected for you. And then four of them you get to choose yourself based on a few options. And so let me first just run through the ones that were pre-selected for me. So the Patrick Ta product that I got was this velvet blush and this is in the shade She's Passionate. So it's supposed to be a really pretty pink blush shade. And Patrick Ta is especially famous for his powder cream blush duos, but this is just a powder formula by itself. It isn't one of those duos. And I love how beautiful his packaging is. Let me just go ahead actually and open this up for you guys. Ooh, wow, that is so, so pretty. I love this packaging. Okay, and here is the blush itself. Really pretty, I'm excited for this. I've been needing a really solid pink powder blush, so this is going to be a nice addition to my collection. And then the next item that I got pre-selected, and this is probably honestly the item I'm most excited about in this box, is this Huda Beauty Rose Gold Remastered Palette. And I have never tried Huda Beauty eyeshadow before. It's in that price range where I would usually just prefer to get a Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, or Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow for the price, but I'm super excited to try out her formula because I've heard amazing things. So here is the palette itself, really, really beautiful, sultry picture of Huda. Here are the shadows. So this is a really beautiful color story. I feel like this is also so perfect for the Valentine's Day season we're going through right now. It really has a lovely rose gold theme. So you have a lot of pinks but also some plummy burgundy shades some neutral mattes and also some beautiful gold shades as well so i'm very excited to put this on my lids and the textures of these shadows look so gorgeous as well i don't know if you guys can see in the camera but the shimmer shades just look so 
so tempting. I think I'm gonna have to film a separate video just with this palette so I can do some thorough swatches and review of this. But for today, we'll just do some initial impressions of this on my lids. Next up, we have here a product from one of my favorite brands of all time, Pat McGrath. So this is her Fetishize Black Mascara. And I honestly don't actually use mascara pretty much ever. <laughs> I basically use eyeliner on an everyday basis and because my eyelashes are just so straight, I find even if I curl them and apply mascara, it's just really hard to keep them upright. So usually I just don't bother. But I mean, for today's look, I will try this on for you guys and hopefully this keeps my eyelashes up. And then the last pre-selected product was this lip product. So this is from a brand called About Face and it is a matte paint it lip color. I think the shade name is Endurance. So it's supposed to be a long lasting matte liquid formula. So here is the bottle itself. Very cute packaging. I'm a fan. I'm usually not someone who likes matte liquid lipsticks. Hopefully they have a good formula that isn't really drying on my lips, but very excited to try this out. And I think also this will go super beautifully with this eyeshadow palette. In general, actually, I think this color story all goes together really well, like this blush with this eyeshadow with this lip product. So I think we'll have a really pretty Valentine's appropriate look with this. So next up, let's go through the products I picked myself. So the way this works is for each additional slot, you'll have several options and you can pick amongst those. So the first item we have here are these scrunchies from Kitsch. And I actually was interested in these because I got some of these scrunchies in my Beautylish Lucky Bag. And ever since then, I've been wearing these a ton. So even though this is something I normally would not have picked for my glam bag because the price of these is relatively low, like this is $12, where some of the other options were much more expensive, I still went with this because I knew this was something I would actually end up using. And I think these colors too are just so fun and so perfect for the Valentine's Day season. Really excited to start using these. And then next up we have this hand cream from a brand called Ahava and this is their Dead Sea Water Mineral Hand Cream and the scent is Cactus and White Pepper. Ooh, it's a nice like kind of fresh smell. Here is what it looks like. It's mostly a sweet scent. I don't know that I'm necessarily getting cactus and pink pepper. It's more like just kind of a slightly fruity sweet scent, but quite pleasant. I feel like the hand cream mostly absorbs into your skin quite quickly. You do feel a little bit of a film, but it does feel nicely nourishing on the hands. Next up, we have the Sonic Tea Bar Facial Massager from Complex Culture. So I'm really excited to try this out because I love facial massage. So this is what the product looks Looks like in the box so it's really cute you put a double a battery in this and then i guess you just kind of use it to like massage your face so i think it basically vibrates to increase blood flow to your face and so i'm really excited to try this out and then the final product is this serum from a brand called private doctor so i think this is a korean skincare brand and this is their define minus serum so it's formulated to minimize lines and create definition. Ooh, wow, it comes in a really pretty bottle. So this is a very heavy bottle. It definitely gives you that sort of luxurious experience with the packaging. So I'm very excited to try out this serum. Let me just see if I can tell whether it has any scent because the one thing I'm sort of sensitive to with serums is if it has a really strong scent. Interesting. It has a very gooey texture so it definitely looks very moisturizing. Okay now that I spread it in I feel like I don't actually smell anything. Okay well if it's scentless that's good because I definitely prefer skincare products that don't have any scent to them. I'm very excited to try this. This is probably one of the most luxurious skincare bottles I've ever had. So hopefully this is a good product for my skin as well. So that was all of the products in this Glam Bag X. And I am very excited overall with these products. And actually it's kind of funny looking at my desk right now because I realized all of the products are basically pink with the exception of the mascara. So I think we definitely have sort of a Valentine's Day theme here, or maybe I was just in a Valentine's Day vibe when I picked some of these products. 
but I'm super excited to try these all out and I think this is well, well worth the $55 that I spent in order to get this bag. So without further ado, let's go ahead and try out all of the makeup products. So let's first build a look with this eyeshadow palette. So I'm gonna first go in with my Wayne Gloss number 16 into Demure here. So I think this will be a nice, just peachy shade to blend out in the crease. Ooh, okay, definitely a decent amount of pigmentation upon the initial application, so be careful in dipping your brush in. But this is a really pretty shade. It actually looks a lot more pinky on my lids than I was anticipating. I thought it would be a little bit more peachy, but very pretty, very good for initial transition shade. Now with my classic crease from Sonia G, I'm gonna go into Doll Face over here because I feel like today I am feeling a Valentine's Day vibe with this palette. So especially given the shades we have for the lip color and the blush, I do wanna make this a very pinky look. This is a really pretty bright pink shade. I would say it is a little bit harder to blend out than the previous shade, which really blended like a dream and was a little bit more powdery in texture, but this is still pretty easy to work with. Now with that same brush, I'm going into Risqué. So just wanna gradually build up the depth and this shade, I'm gonna keep a little bit more in the outer corner. So now I'm gonna try taking a tiny bit of this black shade and see how things go. Wow, this is a very pigmented shade. Alrighty, so now I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more of Doll Face, that pink shade, cause I wanna just bring a little bit more of that vibrancy back and hopefully use this also to help blend out the black a little bit. Now let's dip into some of these shimmer shades. So I have my Chikahoto GSN 9 and I'm gonna first take some of Fling and just put this in the inner third of the eyes. This does seem to have a slightly creamy texture. It doesn't pick up super easily with a brush. Like I feel like I'm digging my brush into it and I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's a bit of an indent from where I put my brush in, but I don't actually see a lot of pigment coming out, so. Maybe this is better applied with a finger. Now let me actually just try going in with a finger. Okay, yeah, I think that picked up a lot more. Oh yeah, okay, that makes a world of a difference. Okay, so these creamier shimmer shades should definitely be applied with a finger. Wow, I do, I am very intrigued by this formula. Let me actually just kind of sweep this all over the mobile lid. I will layer on some more shades in the center, but wow, this really packs a punch when applied with a finger. So funny because when I was applying it with a brush, really like no pigment was coming up. All right, so now let me actually just see if Pink Diamond is that same formula or not. So I'm gonna first try it with a brush and see how far we get. Okay, this one applies a little bit better with a brush. It's kind of surprising to me because kind of in pan, this looked more like a metallic that you could pick up with a brush, whereas this looked like maybe more so a shimmery shade that would be best applied with a finger. But in terms of texture and practice, this one picks up a lot better on a brush. I mean, I'm sure it'll be great with a finger application as well, but at least it's a fairly opaque layer with a brush stroke. Wow, that's a really pretty shade. I love the shimmer in this. This is a really interesting formula. I'm glad, I'm so glad that this came in this glam bag because as I mentioned, I've never tried Huda's shadows before, but I am quite a fan. Like it's hard for me to compare this with my other high-end eyeshadows because I feel like this texture is just so different. It's like so creamy. Like it really feels like these are cream shadows in a powder palette, so I'm very intrigued. So now I'm just gonna blend everything out a little bit more close to the brow bone. And for the lower lash line, I'm gonna first go into Doll Face on my ESMG 27 brush and just sweep this all over the lower lash line. And as I'm putting this look together, I'm realizing it's starting to look a lot like the Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath palettes that I recently got. So, I mean, <laughs> I guess I've succeeded in making a Valentine's Day inspired look, but I probably should have taken this in a different direction since you guys have now seen looks like this from me 
in several videos in a row. Next up, I'm gonna take some risque and just put this on the outer third, give it a little bit more of that plum shade, and then take a tiny bit of the black truffle as well. Whoops, oh wow, that picked up very quickly. Wow, some of these shadows, I think because they have this sort of slightly creamy formula are a little bit deceptive in terms of how much pigment they have. Like they really pick up quite easily. Wow, okay, just going back in with some doll face to hopefully tone this down a tad bit. And now I'm curious whether Pink Diamond would pick up on one of these smaller brushes. So let me try some of that and see if I can sweep that on the lower lash line. Okay, I definitely managed to pick up some sparkle. It's not as opaque as on the lid, but I think this picks up pretty well actually for a shimmery formula. I find this formula to be just so fun as well. Like, I don't know if you guys can really see, but it really has like pink and white glitter in it. Like you can see it clearly in pan. And then when you put it on the lid, it actually translates like that as well. Like you can definitely distinctly see some of the white particles and some of the pink particles. And this is just very different from other shimmers I've tried that tend to just have one color to them. So maybe they'll be dual chrome and the color will shift in the light, but they won't have distinctly two different types of shimmer colors. So this is very much looking like the mini love palette right now on my eyes. So I'm gonna try to diversify a little bit. I'm gonna take this trust fund color and see if I can apply this with a brush on the inner third of my eyes just to, you know, change things up a little bit. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, this one is applying, I think, with a brush without too much problem. It's interesting to me that fling was really hard to apply with a brush, though it was very gorgeous applied with a finger. Okay, I think Trust Fun didn't actually add that much to the look. I think layered on top of the pink, it just adds a little bit of peachiness, but not a ton. So maybe let's actually go in with this moon dust shade, which I'm pretty intrigued by. And so I have this on a mini booster and I'm just gonna plop this into the inner corner. Ooh, okay, this definitely has some impact. Wow, that picked up very, very easily. Huh, that's really pretty. So I would normally use the same shade in my inner corner as my brow bone, but in the interest of trying some more shades, let's go in with Bubbly on the side of this brush and just sweep this in the brow bone area. So I think that's probably all the eyeshadow I'm able to fit on my lids today, but I'll have to do another dedicated video to this palette do swatches for you guys and also build a more unique look because today I really focused on these shades. But I think if I go down here, I'll be able to build a rose look that is a little bit less like the Valentine's Day looks I've been doing lately. So I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of eyeliner on, curl my lashes and be right back. So I put a little bit of eyeliner on and then I did my best to curl my very straight, fine lashes. <laughs> so now let's try this fetishized mascara from Pat McGrath. So I have heard great things about Pat McGrath mascara, so I'm very excited to try this out. I feel like my lashes are already falling down even before the mascara is going on. So don't expect dramatic results even if this is an amazing product. This is a pretty dry formula, which is good. Hopefully that means it's better for stubby lashes. Can you guys see my lashes now at all? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I feel like it's really hard for me to use any products that actually allow you to see my eyelashes. This is why I usually just rely on eyeliner. But I will say I don't see a ton happening in terms of volume and lengthening. I see a little bit, but definitely I've used other mascaras that do more in those departments. That said, I do like that this is a slightly drier formula because I find with a lot of very wet mascaras, it tends to just get everywhere. Alrighty, I think that's as good as we're gonna get. I don't know if you guys can really see my lashes. Yeah, so now you probably know why <laughs> I normally do not wear mascara. I wonder now actually maybe I should have omitted the eyeliner today so you could see my lashes a little bit better. But honestly, it's not, I think, enough to really compensate for just how fine and straight my lashes are. Unfortunately, sorry Pat McGrath, but I don't think this is going to change my 
habits of not really wearing mascara, but solid mascara overall. I can't, I'm not a very good judge though as someone who pretty much never wears mascara. So alrighty, now let's go to the Patrick Ta portion of this. So I have here my Refer Number no. 5 brush and I didn't put any bronzer on today because I really wanted to just see very clearly the color and effect of this blush. So let me just dab into here and then see how this goes. Okay, so definitely a pretty firmly packed powder. So you can slowly build things up or dig your brush in and get more product. Okay, this is a nice pretty pinky peachy tone. It's actually a bit more peachy than I realized. So I think you could pair this well with more warm toned looks as well. And this is a fairly matte formula, I would say. Building this up more than I normally would so you guys can see the color a little bit better. Very pretty, I am a fan. I feel like this looks nice for just a very natural flush. I think actually looking in pan, there is a little bit of shimmer in the actual formula itself. Let me see if I can give you guys a good swatch of this. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that well, but that is the blush swatched and so there is definitely a little bit of a sheen to it but I feel like on the cheeks it mostly just looks matte like when I look close up there might just be a tiny bit of sheen but let me let me add some more just so we can see if there's any reflectiveness yeah I would definitely say you probably still want to apply some highlighter on top of this it's not going to give you a ton of reflectivity on its own and now we have the final product. So this little about face matte lipstick. So it has a cute little doe foot applicator and this is a pretty deep purpley plum shade actually. So let's see how it looks. Oh wow, very, very liquidous. It is a very thin watery formula. So it's a little bit tricky to get in the right place. I feel like I'm making a little bit of a mess. I'm really glad that I didn't apply this earlier in the video because then I would just have a mess on my face. Alrighty, so here is the liquid lipstick applied. And I would say it looks to me a lot better in camera than it looks in real life. So when I look at this in the mirror, I feel like because it's so pigmented but so watery in texture, I found it really hard to just keep it within my lips and also to make sure it wasn't patchy. I really love the color of this, especially with this look. It is just a really beautiful vampy matte lipstick, but I don't know if I'll actually reach for this product a whole lot because now that it has kind of started drying down on my lips, I do feel like it's going to be a little bit drying on the lips and I did find the application just kind of tricky to work with. That said, I think if you are looking for a matte lipstick look and you are pretty good at being very precise with your lip application, this is a beautiful color and it is a very lightweight formula. It basically feels like you don't have anything on your lips, but they are kind of powdery and dry. So you don't feel like you have a layer of anything on your lips, but it does just feel a little bit drying. Let me just see if there's any transfer with this. Okay, I guess at least for now, there's a little bit of transferring, but I feel like maybe when it dries down more, that will go away. So yeah, unfortunately not my favorite product, but not too bad if you want a really matte look. So overall, in terms of my first impressions, I would say definitely my favorite product I've tried so far is this Huda Beauty eyeshadow palette. It's been really cool trying out her formulas because I feel like her formulas are quite unique. So as I mentioned, part of what's prevented me from trying Huda so far is because I buy a lot of eyeshadow and I don't really have enough time to use all my eyeshadows, I always kind of figured, well, Pat McGrath, Viseart, and Natasha Denona, and maybe Charlotte Tilbury have better eyeshadow formulas, so better to save my money for those. But in trying this palette, I think Huda has some fairly unique textures and formulas, so it's hard to compare apples to apples. It isn't like clearly better or worse than any of the other brands I mentioned. It's just quite different and produces a slightly different effect on the lids. Like the mattes are your pretty standard powder mattes, like they work beautifully, but you know, nothing really, really different. It's the shimmers that I find to be quite a unique formula in that they are just so creamy and applied with a finger come across so pigmented. And then with these sorts of shades over here, 
They just have a very unique multi-dimensionality to them in that you can clearly see multiple colors at the same time in the shade. So that's pretty intriguing to me and I'm really excited to play around with more of these shades. In terms of the Patrick Ta blush, I would say it's a really beautiful compact and this is a shade that I kind of need more of in my collection right now. So I'm excited for that and I think I'll end up getting a lot of use from this. For example, I think this would actually be perfect paired with the Pat McGrath highlighter that I just got. I think they have a very similar sort of pinky undertone to them. For the mascara, I would say it's probably a really great mascara. Just unfortunately, as you guys can tell, my lashes are not really quite equipped for standing out on their own. So I might try this in a future video without eyeliner just so you guys can see more fully the effect. But honestly, I think if I removed my eyeliner right now, you probably wouldn't be able to see my lashes much anyway. So unfortunately, I think mascara is just not really the way to go for me on a day-to-day -day basis. With this lip color, I do think it's a really beautiful color and the overall effect is nice. It's just a very finicky product that's not terribly comfortable. So I personally don't anticipate using this a lot, but if you are a matte lipstick fan, I think this is probably a pretty solid formula that's relatively comfortable for matte lipsticks in that it doesn't feel like a whole lot on the lips, even if it's slightly drying, that's just to be expected with any matte lipstick. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this first unboxing and try on of the Ipsy Glam Bag X. I am super excited that they have started this initiative because it's always kind of a bummer to get a lot of things in your Ipsy bag that you later just don't use and just kind of, you know, create clutter in your household. So I think these are all brands and products I'm pretty excited to try out. And this is a really great price point to do them at because, you know, I paid only $55 for 200 $55 worth of product. So even if there's some hits or misses, not a big deal. So if you guys have gotten the Glam Bag X as well, or if you guys are otherwise Ipsy subscribers, I'm curious what you guys thought about this month's bag and what your favorite products were. And if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. My previous Ipsy video was not that popular, so I'm not sure if this is content that you guys actually enjoy. So definitely let me know down below if you do. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And thank you all so much for joining me today. I'll catch you next time. Bye.